my friends, I know. Hola! It's another day in pure paradise. Yes! It's another math video. You have to love it, my friends. Woo! Look at what we have here, my friends. It is a tiger. Oh my goodness, and he's looking off like he's looking for some prey, possibly. What a great feature animal of the day. Woohoo! Let's get started. Here we have a learning target. This is our objective. This is our, well, not so much our, our question, but this is what is guiding us and what we are going to learn today. Here we go. It says divide decimals by single digit whole numbers involving easily identifiable multiples using place value understanding and relate to a written method. <laughs> I know. I only kind of giggle here because I... I <laughs> I can't help but notice the complexity of our learning target. And some of you are really going, Mr. Wara, really? And you know, my friends, I'm just going to say, look, this learning target is complex as it's written. We are going to break it apart piece by piece, deconstruct it. As we go through the video, I'll keep referring back to what we're doing. But basically, we're just dividing decimals by whole numbers, and we're going to be using multiples that are going to be easy to use. And then we're going to just show a written method. Okay, and you'll see. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and get started here. We have this expression. We have 9 tenths divided by 3. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be using a couple of different uh, materials. I'm going to be using my place value chart, which you can see in front of you. And also, I'm going to be using these place value disks, which I've used before in, in other videos. And what I want to do is, when I look at my division problem, I can't help but always emphasize how important it is to know what the names of the terms are. And a term, remember, is just that number that's usually separated by, in this case, an operation sign. So 9 tenths is my dividend. And it's important that you understand that that first number there is the dividend. And if it was written as a fraction, the dividend would be the number on the top, the numerator. That would be that number up above. And that's just another way to write it. So I'm going to go ahead and show my 9 tenths on our place value chart. Each one's a tenth, so I'm going to need nine tenths to fit in here, which is actually great because we're dividing by three. I'm going to divide nine tenths into three equal groups. And if I do that, how many tenths are going to be in each group? Right, I heard, I, I thought I heard somebody out there shout out, Mr. Wara, it's three tenths. That's right. So three tenths are going to be in each group. So let's go ahead and write our statement then. So here, this is going to equal three tenths. And that's because you have that one group of three tenths, another group of three tenths, and your third group of three tenths. So I'm going to write this equation then in what I'm going to call unit form. Nine tenths divided by three equals three tenths. So nine tenths divided by three equals three tenths. And, and this is actually connecting it to a written method. So there's that one step that we've already done. Now I'm wondering, you know, how great it is that this unit form, when we write it this way, 9 tenths divided by 3 equals 3 tenths, how that really helps us divide. Because when we can identify like the units that we're using, in this case, the tenths, it's just like dividing 9 apples into 3 groups. Okay, If you know the unit you are sharing, and in this case, then it's just like whole number division. Okay, You could just think about the basic fact, which is 9 divided by 3. So I'm going to go ahead and write here to make sure that we have that understanding. I'm going to put, so three groups of three tenths is going to be equal to nine tenths. And that is going to be the same as saying three times three tenths is equal to nine tenths. And that's the equation that matches up with that written method that we're putting here. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and do another problem just like that. Now here we have, oh, he's over here now. Cool. Now we have 24 hundredths divided by... Four. I kind of want to follow that same procedure. First thing I did was I wanted to represent my dividend, which is 24 hundredths, onto my place value chart. Now we actually have two tenths here and we actually have four hundredths. Now we're trying to make four equal groups. Well, the hundredths, we know that we can take each one of those hundredths and we can make a separate group. We can put one hundredth in each group. However, when we come to the tenths, we have a problem. We have two tenths, and we can't share two tenths equally in that form. But what we could do is we could right decompose each one of those tenths into ten hundredths, because one tenth is equal to ten hundredths. Let's do that. Okay, now what I've done is I've just simply taken each of the tenths and shown 
how I can make ten hundreds. And I have ten hundreds here, and then I have ten hundreds right down below here. Well, if I have ten, now I have ten, right? And in another ten hundreds here, I have twenty. Now I have twenty-four hundreds within my hundreds place value. Well, if I have ten, twenty, four, and I want to make groups, four equal groups, how many am I going to have in each group? We have twenty-four hundreds divided by, right? And now it's like our basic fact. So we know that we have 24 hundreds divided by four, six hundreds. Again, that's that big advantage of using that unit form because we've taken the number now. So we just make groups of six. And let me move these over. And there you go. In order to make four equal groups, I put six hundreds in each group. Okay. Woohoo. Yeah, yeah. Now let's go ahead and do another one. Now in this particular problem, now that I've done a couple of them, what I would like to do is to go ahead and kind of speed through this particular problem, show you my work. You put the video on pause, do a little bit of work because this is all about you getting a better understanding, right? It's not about getting right answers, although that is nice, but it's really about the process and we want to make sure that you guys understand the process and you want to see how you're doing and this is a great way to check. So at this point, go ahead and put the video on pause and then you'll be able to see all my work. Okay, I just want to stop here to show that I've represented the number. I have three hundredths and I have two thousandths and I need to make eight equal groups. You can see I can't do that, so I'm going to have to regroup and I'm going to do that now. Okay, here we go. Uh, here's all my work. Uh, like I said, I represented the problem. I had to convert my hundreds into thousands. Since our math system is the base 10 system, that means that we are going to be breaking numbers apart by 10. So we have 10 thousandths in one hundredth. We have 10 hundredths in one tenth, 10 tenths in one one. You get the idea. This is a really, really important concept that we understand that we have that power of 10. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Tell me this is not fun. Oh, I just love this. Okay, let's look at another problem here. We have one and five tenths divided by five. I'm gonna state that in our uniform since we've been doing this before. So I have 15 tenths divided by five. Again, I pose this question because I see the importance of writing this in unit form. Why is that so useful? It's useful because we're just having, it's like a basic fact. So it's 15 tenths divided by five, which is just three tenths. Wow, how easy is that? One and five tenths divided by five is going to equal three tenths. Does it get any easier than that? I think not, my friends. Whoa, El Tigre, you're like center stage now, huh? Yes, okay, you know, you're quite the predator. I don't want to really get you angry. Not that tigers are angry. You're just hunters, it's what you do. But I'm going to kind of get you off the side here. Make you large enough so we can see you. All right. Now we have one, it looks like one and five hundredths divided by five. Again, I'm going to read this expression in unit form. That means I have one hundred five hundredths divided by, you guess it, five. I'm trying to think, is there another way we could decompose uh, this quantity? I don't know, we, we could say we have one one and our five hundredths. Oh, there's another way. We could also say we have ten tenths and five hundredths. We'll just use the number there. But I'm wondering, looking at those three different ways there, I wonder which way of renaming this particular dividend is going to be the most useful for us when we're dividing by five. I don't know. I think I would actually say the last one, 10 tenths and 5 hundredths. 10 tenths and 5 hundredths are both multiples of five. So I think this would make it easy to use a basic fact so that we could divide this mentally. Of course, the answer would be 2 tenths and 1 hundredth if we took 10 divided by five, and of course, one hundredth, because five divided by five. You gotta make sure we get that TH on there, not to be confused with that whole number. However, you know, you could kind of make the argument that the 105 hundredths might be easier for some, because I was just looking at that number and I'm thinking, you know what? You could say it's easier because, see, in a hundred, I know there's 25s, because there's 20 nickels in one dollar. Well, 105 is just like one more. So mentally, I might think of this as just simply being that 100 that I told you about, which, you know, there's 100, but that is is equal to 25s. That's how my mind was thinking. I'm trying to write those notes down. Plus one more five. And I just had that 20 plus one. So I'd have 21 
And because I was dealing with a unit form of hundreds, I just have 21 hundreds. Now, this is important as we decompose numbers and look at unit form, and that's what we mean by unit form. So when we keep going back up, looking at our learning target, that we're dividing decimals, all of our divisors have been a single digit whole number. The five, the three, the eight, they've all been single digit whole numbers, which is what our learning target says up above. It's involving easily identifiable multiples because the multiples that we're picking are compatible with the dividend. Five with, with one and five hundreds, we had the uh, 32 thousandths with the four, they were all easily identifiable multiples. And we're using our place value understanding so we were able to decompose these numbers. And now look, at we've related it to that written method. Now it makes that learning target not seem so difficult, does it? Let's do another. So let's go ahead and do this the same, same way that we did the last one. Now our number looks a little bit different. Now we have, you can say, 3,015 thousandths divided by five. So there's our first way. Another way that we can decom decompose this number? Sure, we could say we have three ones and 15 thousandths. And do we have another way? Well, we do. Couldn't we say we have, we have 30 tenths and 15 thousandths? We could also say that we have 300 one hundredths and 5 thousandths. Now we have all these different ways of writing that number, that expression there, but we need to try to find the way that's going to work best for us. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking 30 tenths and 15 thousandths would probably be the best form to use because both of those numbers, yeah, they're like a multiple of five. So I took 30 tenths and I'm going to divide that by five. Yeah, I'm going to get six tenths. If I take my 15 thousandths, divide it by five, I'm going to get three thousandths. So now I get an ending number of three tenths. I'm sorry. So my answer would be I have six tenths and three thousandths. Isn't that cool? So now let's look at a completely different setup here. We have compare the relationship between. And what do we have here? We have four and eight tenths divided by six is equal to eight tenths. And then we have 48 divided by six equals eight. You know, I'm wanting to to immediately say, well, if we're comparing a relationship, we're looking at these two equations. And I mean, what kind of relationship do you notice, you know, between these two equations? You know, there's something standing out. I mean, how, how are they alike? If we look at this one here, the eight is 10 times greater than the eight tenths. So when we look at the quotient, clearly the eight over here is eight times greater. And then this would be one tenth of the value of our eight over here. Also, look at this, 48 here, 48 would be 10 times greater than the 4.8. Again, this is left with one tenth of your value, whereas the 48 is 10 times greater. See, the digits are all the same. That's what it is. You know, the digits are exactly the same. We have a four and an eight here. We have a four and eight here. We have six. We have six, we have exactly the same same digits, but the decimal points are in different places. And that's what's key. The dividend here is 10 times greater than the dividend over here with four and eight tenths. So again, I'm gonna go back to this question and it's something that we've done in this lesson. So how then could we use the 48 divided by six to help us with the four and eight tenths divided by six? And I'm sure some of you are already thinking, yeah, you know what? It's that basic fact. You see that basic fact. And if we have that basic fact, then you can get a quick answer. And, and mentally, see, remember, it's the units that were really the, the issue here. The units are different. It's a different, we have tenths here in the very first one. And we have, yeah, whole numbers on the second equation. So when you think about four and eight tenths, that really is just 48 tenths. We could just think of that as 48 tenths. Now it looks like it, like our whole number does, except the unit is just different. So the division is going to be the exact same because 48 tenths divided by six is still going to give us that eight tenths. We could write it this way in written form, but we know that that's also written as eight tenths in the numerical form. Pretty simple, huh? So let's look at another problem like this. Yes, it looks almost exactly the same. We have all the same digits. I see the four, zero, eight. I see the four, zero, eight. 
the divisor is exactly the same. But look at our quotient. Here we have a whole numbers. And in fact, we have all whole numbers here. And this one where we don't. So again, it looks like that we have different different units. The digits are the same. However, we're not talking about 10 times greater now, though, are we? Yeah, if you look closely, yeah, if we look at the quotient, we can see that we have 51, but that's 51 hundredths. And in order to get from, well, either way, from 51 hundredths to 51, this decimal would have to be multiplied by 100, right? Be multiplied by 100 in order to get there. So actually, this one here is going to be 100 times greater. This is only 100th of that value of 51. So we have a difference. So we have definitely different units. So, but we could still write it. We could write our 400, I'm sorry, I'm jumping. We could write our four and eight hundredths as 408 hundredths. See, then we could divide that by our eight. What's it going to give us? 51 hundredths. So of course, the only thing that's different was the units involved. Here we had hundreds and here we have whole numbers. All right, we're going to do one last one. And then this is the opportunity for you to, to go ahead and write your number down in this format. OK, so I think I forgot to tell you that you could put this on pause. Maybe you did after the same problem. But you can see the units were clearly different. We have thousands, whereas here we have whole numbers, but up into the thousands. Kind of interesting. OK, and again, this lesson was all about just really learning how to divide those decimals by that single digit divisor. And this was our single digit divisor, so we did that. Easily identifiable multiples. We were definitely using place value understanding as we were regrouping these and looking at the different, the unit form and how the units changed. And finally, we did a written method. We've been writing these out. So this is how it came back to our final understanding of our learning target. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. My friends, we must come to that point in the video where we say hasta la vista. That's right. It's a, just a short departure because you know I will be back, my friends. I will be back. Now, live long.